Good morning, everyone. Today's driving question is, what is a hypothesis? Please take five minutes to complete the two questions. Question one is, what is renewable energy? Question two, please two types of energy sources. Now, please pause the video and give yourself five minutes to complete this task. Are you finished? Let's go. Question one, what is energy? Energy in physics is the ability or capacity to do work. It may exist in potential, kinetic, thermal, electrical, chemical, nuclear, or other various forms. Question two, list two types of energy sources. We have solar energy and wind energy. However, here are, here are a few more sources. We have geothermal energy. We have hydrogen energy. We have tidal energy, wave energy, hydroelectric energy, biomass energy, nuclear power, fossil fuels, which includes coal, oil, and natural gases. Now, if you have listed any of those resources as well, please give yourself the mark and congratulations. <clears throat> Now, for today's lesson, we'll be focusing on the driving question. What is a hypothesis? When carrying out required practical activities, we are often given an aim for that practical. Some examples of aims are, and these are some actual practicals that you will be carrying out as you progress through secondary school. To investigate the effects of a range of concentrations of salts or sugar solutions on the mass of a plant's tissue. To investigate the effect of pH on the rate of reaction of amylase enzyme. To investigate the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis using an aquatic organisms such as pondweed. And the last one, plan and carry out an investigation into the effect of a factor on human reaction time. So these are actually aims of required practicals that you guys will carry out in secondary school. However, that's not always the case. Sometimes we're given a problem and we are asked to come up with a prediction as to what will happen at the end of the experiment. The name given to this prediction is called a hypothesis. But what is an hypothesis? Hmm. A hypothesis is a possible answer to your scientific question. It includes an explanation and a prediction. Doing research on your question helps you make a better hypothesis. Again, a hypothesis is a possible answer to your scientific question. It includes an explanation and a prediction. Doing research on your question helps you make a better hypothesis. Throughout this lesson, we will be using the following words. They are hypothesis, prediction, explanation and condition. Now, this is a target practice. I learned from a veterinarian that Nelson's big hairy ears are always moist and warm. This makes them prone to ear infection. What is this an example of? Was this a research, a hypothesis, a prediction or an observation? Again, I learned from my veterinarian that Nelson's big hairy ears are always moist and warm. This makes them prone to ear infection. What is this an example of? Was the research done to come to this conclusion? Was this an hypothesis? Was this a guess? 
See, is it a prediction? Did the veterinarian predict Nelson's problem? Or D, was it an observation? From what the, from what the veterinarian observed, he gave a prediction. Which one of these are the answer? The answer is a research. A veterinarians are someone are someone who went to a university or a uni or college to study veterinarian science. A lot of researches had to be done throughout the veterinarians. Years in uni, so this one would have to be a research. So again, a hypothesis is a possible answer to your scientific question. It includes an explanation and a prediction. Doing research on your question helps you make a better hypothesis. Again, a hypothesis is a possible answer to your scientific question. It includes an explanation and a prediction. Doing research on your question helps you make a better hypothesis. Now I'm going to ask you to copy the practice scenario below. I learned from my veterinarian that Nelson's big hairy ears are always moist and warm. This makes them prone to ear infection. We will be using this scenario for the next slide. Now, question one, why do you think Nelson is shaking his head? List as many reasons as you think, based on the scenario that you've just written. Why do you think Nelson is shaking his head? List as many reasons as you can give, you can list, or what you think about. Question two, fill in the table below. Question. How does the color of a balloon affect how fast it rises? What is the effect of speed on how far a person swings out of the center, out from center? How does the number of people in a canoe affect its speed? Which type of hummingbird nectar attracts the most hummingbirds? Now, for these questions, there are a few things you must know before you are able to answer these questions. What do I need to know to answer this question? What are some of the possible things that you can think about? Right, for question one, how does the color of a balloon affect how fast it rises? What are some of the things we need to know? Hmm. Question two, what is the effect of speed on how far a person swings out of a out from center? Hmm. How does the number of people in a canoe affect its speed? What do we need to know about the people in the canoe? Which type of hummingbird nectar attracts the most hummingbird? Hmm. Let's see. Question one. He has water in his ears. He has an ear infection. He has tick in his ears. Now, I know most of you guys have dogs at home. So you could have come up with more than one explanation as to why the dog was shaking his head. Now for the table. Now, how does the color of the balloon affect how fast it rises? What do I need to know to answer this question? We need to know the weight of each color of the balloons. Now, every balloon weighs something a different weight based on its color. Two, what is the effect of speed on how far someone swings out from a center? We need to know the weight of the people and the speed of the ride. Question three, how does the number of people in a canoe affect its speed? We need to know how hard they are paddling. How many are paddling? If they know how to paddle. For the last one, the hummingbird, which type of hummingbird nectar attracts the most hummingbird? We need to know the recipe of the nectar and the kind of hummingbird. So before we're able to answer any questions in a scenario, we have to do our researches to come up with a few solutions before we can make a prediction. So again, 
if you are given a scenario in the form of a question, you have to research the question before providing a prediction or creating an hypothesis. Now, this is something for you to do on your own. Take five minutes to complete this task. Please pause your video. Welcome back. Question one, doing dash on your question helps you understand it better so you can write a good hypothesis. The answer is research. Always remember doing research on your question will help you understand it better so that you can write a good hypothesis. Question two, when you do research, what could you do or where could you look for information? Where can you find the information required for your research? You can look in books, magazines, the internet, interview excerpts, make more observation. Question three, name dash can give you ideas about what information is important. The answer is word cloud. Number four, most investigations have more than one possible. So if you're doing an investigation, it has more than one possible one. Hypothesis. What are some qualities of a good hypothesis? One might ask. The answers are educated, testable, predict, explains, clear, a statement includes a condition and is often stated as if, then, and because. So again, what are some qualities of a good hypothesis? It was made by someone who was educated, someone who was trained in that area. Their hypothesis should be testable, so you should be able to carry out the test and get the same results. It is also a prediction and hypothesis gives you an explanation. An hypothesis should be clear. It is also a statement. It includes a condition and it's often stated as if, when, then, and because. I've added one more to that list, but that is perfectly fine. Now, what three things do you need to include in a, in a hypothesis? Now, these are a must. So again, the driving question is what is an hypothesis? These are three things we must include in a hypothesis. One are a, a condition. It's what you are doing. B, a prediction. It's what you think will happen. C, an explanation. Why do you think it will happen? All right, so let's say we were doing the potato in salt or the potato with salt in water experiment. What is it that you're doing? We added the salt into the middle of the potato and we are wondering if the salt is going to move towards the water or the water is going to move towards the salt through the potato. Prediction. What do you think will happen? In my prediction, I think the water will move from where it is into the center of the potato where the salt is. Explanation. My explanation would, would basically to define what is osmosis. And that will give me my full marks for answering this question. Complete the following table. Word or phrase. What does it mean? What is an hypothesis? What is a research? What is a condition? What is a prediction? What is an explanation? And last, give an example or draw a picture of an hypothesis, a research, condition, a prediction, explanation. Until, until next time, I'm your teacher. Stay safe.